to the next uh, topic I'd like for us to talk a little bit about is, is gender um, and talking about either like our gender <laughs> during the day um, and or the gender we choose to express um, on stage or whatever. I know for me, I came to hold and identify as a trans person, uh, I think strongly in part because I started doing drag. I think in doing drag, I was able to really uh, find myself and have a place in which I could try it on, so to speak, or try parts of it on um, and really begin to find like who I, I don't know, like just a, a fuller expression of who I'd always wanted to become and be, but never felt like I was in the right environment or the right situation uh, to be able to really um, even just try or experiment or see, well, I wonder what I would look like. Um, and, and drag really did that for me. How, it, how has your gender been um, expressed or impacted by drag? It's a long story, but I'm just going to keep it real short. Um, you know, again, growing up in the 90s and in, in the Bronx, you know, um, being a boy and being perceived as a certain type of boy has currency in the gay community. And that was taught to me as a very at a very young age. And that just stuck with me for a very long time. So any um, any feelings of femininity, uh, um, were just suppressed and hidden because once the boys saw that, then, you know, that was a turnoff. You weren't getting any D that night if they, you know, if they saw all that. So, you know, you just kept all that inside. Um, and years later, you know, I, I suppressed so much. I started going through depression and started trying to figure out like, what is going on with me? Um, at the same time, I was part of the chorus and I was doing a lot of drag and I was performing and, I was, when I was in drag, I just felt, I was like, this just feels like me. And it's not just like being on stage and performing. It's like, I see myself when I am, um, you know, in hair and makeup. Like I, I see the person that I feel like I am on the inside. Um, and that just, that came out more and more the more I started to do drag. Um, and I was able to connect with myself and my uh, my true self and my authentic self through performing and through doing drag. So uh, about five years ago, I uh, you know came out as trans and was living uh, as a trans woman, um, and it was very public and and all that stuff. And then you know something there there was something else that was uh, that was missing because I felt like I was suppressing another part of myself. It's like I went from this end all the way to this end. And then I realized I don't have to be either. Uh, and that's when I recognized my non-binary identity and um, I can embrace all of myself and all of my identities uh, into one and I don't have to be one or the other. And being non-binary has brought so much freedom to me. There's no pressure to be anything. I can exist as I want to exist. One day you're going to see me looking this way. Next day you're going to see me looking this way. It is what it is. And if you can't deal with it, I, ain't, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, here, I'll, I'll go. Um, I identify as trans non-binary um i've had like i was i'm afab i've been on testosterone for um almost two years now that's crazy um and when i first started doing drag before i went on testosterone at all um my king looks were very traditionally masked very like honestly pretty similar to this maybe a bit less like jiggle but um mm -hmm. But I, and I think a lot of kings go through that. Like I've seen it, it's very common to see a lot of kings, like they'll go for very traditionally mask in the beginning. And some will stick with that and do an amazing, beautiful job. And then there'll be others um, like me, for example, who, yes, they'll still have their like traditionally mask looking looks, but um, I've been told some of my looks look very like um, bearded queen. Um, and I've actually, debated on do I want like a drag king persona and a drag queen persona but honestly like all of that is dragon 
like dragons pronouns are they them and i i just like i drag kings are my home and i want to still ha like be a king but i think i should still be able to like dragon should still be able to like have a, a skirt moment or a I, I recently did a look where i taped over the nipples and just had like giant cherries on the titties so i was like well we're we're just gonna have this moment and um it's been it has been very healing for me to like be able to feel for the first time like fully comfortable in my masculinity that i now that i feel comfortable in masculinity now that i have those days where um i can have my more euphoria i feel much more comfortable putting like eyeshadow on and lipstick and all these other things that for a lot of my younger years I was very resistant to because it never felt quite right. And I didn't discover I was non-binary until I was about 21. So just all of high school and a lot of early college was this like fever and I must be a girl. I, I don't fully feel like a boy, so I must be, be a girl. And just a lot of like tearing myself apart, but drag has really allowed me to like do that gender healing um, and be as expressive as I want. And I really appreciate that. Bobby? Uh, yeah, so for me, um, obviously in drag, I identify as she, her. Um, for me, my drag is an expression of this, like, you know, it's a very westernized sort of like expression of femininity, you know? Uh, but I think that I, I enjoy that because sometimes it can be really extreme, you know? And, uh, and like, I enjoy everything that goes into that, even though it can be horribly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but out, outside of drag or when I'm not, you know, fully done up, you know, it's really weird because growing up, I never really, I mean, I felt like a boy, like physically, right? Like when I'm looking at like this, you know, genitalia signed up birth sort of like thing. And, you know, but uh, like in another sense, I never really connected to being a quote unquote, like what male supposed to be like that macho sort of sports loving like all that stuff that like was drilled into my head uh, as a kid of like this is what society says you're supposed to be if you're a boy right um i never identified with with that either and then there was a phase during my my like kind of maybe teens into like my early 20s where um I really started, I, I was totally obsessed with everything 80s and new wave and goth. And I think that the reason why I was so drawn to those subcultures in particular was that what I, what I noticed was that a lot of the men were <clears throat> playing with femininity and wearing makeup and long hair and quote unquote, women's clothes. And I think that that's what attracted to me to all of that was that that was felt like something that was very natural for me to do. So I always sort of had this like androgynous, very gender bendy approach to like my self-expression. And the thing was, is that there wasn't the term non-binary really wasn't around yet, or at least I hadn't heard it. And especially not in terms of how we hear it now like and and so the first time that i ever really had like some um had an idea of what to call maybe what i was was that i was talking to someone and they like brought up the whole idea of being two-spirited which is like native american sort of beliefs then they believe in two-spirit people and that sort of like clicked for me but very much like Ashley was talking about earlier, you know, I found myself in in a particular community of gay men, and it was very much uh, 
femininity was sort of frowned upon if you wanted to get the D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I had to, yeah. I had to uh, put her back in the closet, leave yeah. her in the closet again, back in the closet. And uh, that's sort of, you know, and then it, being as masculine as I can. Um, right. But then I started performing in drag a little over four years ago. And, and it's been really interesting because actually I, I was having a conversation with my partner a couple of weeks ago and I was talking the, to them about the fact that, you know, I think that I really identify as non-binary. Like, I don't think that there's necessarily a, and maybe this is, I, and you guys can you feel free to correct me if I, I'm wrong or this isn't right, but like, I don't necessarily feel for myself that there is a trans component to maybe me being non-binary. Non like I feel perfectly comfortable in this, in my body. I feel like everything is the way that it is supposed to be, but I just don't really feel bound by like gender roles in order to express myself. Mm -hmm. So when I get up in full drag, I'm a she and I'm like, you know, super hyper feminine. But then, I mean, I have some times where I'm just like going to the gym in a trucker hat and jersey shorts and like, you know, mobbing around with a full beard. And that's fine, too. Right. Um, I just don't feel bound by like these ideas of like gender and like specific roles or ways that we're supposed to present. Um and so in that way, I feel like I'm non-binary, but I think that that has been one of the things that's been fun for me is that I feel like I'm in a community where I'm in a safe space to sort of like explore that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm encouraged to explore that. And I have a lot of people around me who can I can talk to about it and, uh, you know, hear what they have to say and that's why conversations like this are so good and mm -hmm. this is actually the first time in a public forum that i've ever really like admitted that like mm -hmm. that i feel that way yeah. but <laughs> so yeah. uh, thank you like and, and i look forward to just figuring it out and yeah or thank not God. figuring it out i think that's the beauty of it is that like you know ashley and dragon were saying like i don't necessarily have to i can right. just be happy and exist and have whatever that looks like. 